house. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, if you were already in Sunday school, you already know what blessing you're looking forward to right now. So y'all go ahead and make your hands together for Brother Smokey Wilson. I love 
but just remember God's right there with you to walk you right through it. All right, I think this song right here, I get so many requests down this way. You got to do it. It's called The Long Black Train. There's a long black train coming down the line, leading off the souls that are lost and cry. Reels of sin, only evil remains. Watch out, brother, for that long black train.
Lord, we ask you to continue to bless him and his faithfulness, Lord. The same with the pastor, Lord, bless him as he preaches today. Lord, we ask you to please be with some people uh, who are in need of special prayers also, Lord, in our prayer list this morning. Lord, we ask you to please be with the family, uh, family of uh, Wendy Hawker, Lord. We ask you to please be with Brenda Calvin Bryan. Please be with Sarah Piotr, Lord, has cataract surgery coming up. I ask you to please <clears throat> be with Junior Snow, has back surgery. Jenny Barrett, Jenny Cardwell, Jenna Cardwell, Bobby and Loretta Nichols, Audrey Hopkins, Nancy Newton, Beverly Keene in her back. Uh, please be with Wayne Hodges in his upcoming surgery. Uh, Amy Grafton, Vicki Farmer, Jamie Cole, Dallas Bowen, Landon Walker, Danny Wark in his knee, Ricky Toller's sister. Uh, please be with Robert and Vicki Reed, Evelyn Wallington, uh, Fred and D. Uh, Seabock has COVID. Please be with Billy and Kathy Hedrick, Lord, have COVID as well. Uh, China and Robin, uh, Chuck and Robin Esky, Lord, has COVID as well. Please be with Kevin Hicks, Lord, has uh, cancer. Please be with Brenda and Calvin. I uh, pray you just please be with them. They have COVID, Lord. Tammy Hicks has COVID. And please be with uh, Ricky Anderson, Lord, and the family. Lord, we ask you just to please touch every single person on this list, Lord, and just answer all their needs according to your precious and holy will. Lord, we ask you just to please be with us all, Lord. Just pray that you continue to pour down blessings upon us, Lord, and just help us hear from you today, Lord. And we just pray the most important need of all, Lord. If someone in, is in this house, Lord, as I know you as Lord and Savior, we pray today be the day of their salvation. Lord, we love you and thank you for all you do. For us in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. This time I have Brother Bill make his way up, and he's going to give you our Sunday school and birthday report. Brother Bill. Good morning. Good morning. I don't know how they put me in between a good singer and a perfect gentleman. <laughs> See, y'all can smile. I learned something. They said you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I learned something this week. The Bible says that you men, us men, supposed to fix coffee for our wives. Yep. Got it right in there. Hebrews. <laughs> That's right. I learned that this week. I learned it. Okay, here we go. Ready for it. Of course, we got to have a tickle. Tuesday, September the 14th, I leave. <laughs> Mama Smurf. <laughs> 69. Me too. <laughs> well, sorry, Lord. <laughs> well, mm. Wednesday, my dear wife, Judy Snow. See how I keep my wife? She's a whole lot better looking than I am. Amen. 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 Surprised me he didn't say something. Okay, did I miss anybody? Any anniversaries? I'm going to make this quick so we can get some more singing. Some good preaching, preacher. Some good preaching. <laughs> Lord said you always good. Preaching. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Hey. Don't forget you. Don't forget your tracks. We got plenty of them. And what we do, we have to do quick. Because if you listen to the news, buddy, he's liable to come today. Right. I'm serious. Right. Of course, we'd be better off. All right. And don't forget your missionaries. Pray for all of them, especially for Jimmy Harris. He's the missionary for North Dakota. He's way up yonder. And that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Bill. Uh, we'll go ahead and have a song this morning. Go ahead and stand to your feet and turn to page 232. We're going to sing all verses of Tell Me the Story of Jesus. Page 232. Thank you, Brother Bill.
receive our offering. We got a few announcements we're going to go over real quick. If you open up your bulletin, you see that Hands of Glory are presenting I'm Yours Tonight at 6 o'clock. And please bring a friend. Uh, they still got some, we still got some flyers back there, and I promise you it'll be a blessing for you to come out tonight. And uh, the gospel will be presented, so uh, I would love for you guys to come and be a part of something great tonight. I promise you'll have a blessing. All right, this next Sunday, it's uh, September the 19th at 11 at 6 p.m., Dr. John Mitchell will be with us. Looking forward to that. Also, the uh, Tuesday Bible study is on at 11 o'clock. Uh, please come join us. And also, uh, in concert, Sunday, September the 26th at 10 and 11, the Mark Duval family will be with us. And Christmas play practice starts September 20th at 6.30. If you have any kids that want to be a part of that, she Miss Anita Wark, she'll be glad to uh, answer any questions and have them sign up and join. And also, uh, today's uh, flower arrangement is in memory of Kathy Cole. Y'all just keep uh, Brother Jamie and the family still in your prayers, okay? All right. Well, I was told to be quick, so Brother Manning, come on and pray. And uh, we're going to have Brother Smokey uh, come sing some more for us. Let us pray. Lord, please bless us all from the prayer of your kingdom. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>
crucified him. As he hung there on that cross, he made sure that not one was lost. And in his dying words, he whispered to them,
bless you. Let's pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Now may America bless God. Amen. Amen. He's already blessed us. Thank you, Brother Smokey. Appreciate you being with us today and, and appreciate your faithfulness to the Lord. And, uh, you just know God's hands on Smokey. Amen. Amen. Take your Bibles and turn to Matthew 23. I've been preaching on Sunday night for the past two weeks on the spiritual battle of the last days. The greatest two weapons Satan and his army of demons use against the church is deception that's followed by discouragement. And Satan uses lies to lead us away from the truth of God's Word. And God's Word is what brings us peace, it brings us faith, it brings us confidence and joy in our Christian life. And this old world that's surrounded with sin and infested with unrighteousness in this world we live in. But his truth keeps you and I from plunging into despair. And we must and we can survive these last days until Jesus comes by believing this blessed old book right here called the Word of God. Amen? Amen. If you love the Bible, say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Thank God for his Word. We've talked about his deception in verse 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take ye that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And the Bible says, Take heed, it means to look at, to study into it, to behold, take a long look, a glare, beware, and realize the danger, and protect yourself from it, to perceive, to understand the truth, to regard means to lay it to memory and keep it in your mind at all times because deception is real, but if you study the Word, memorize the Word, it can dispel the deception. We talk, number two, about being disheartened. And boy, that's where we all may be today is disheartened. So many bad things going on, it just takes the heart right out of you. But God says that shouldn't happen. In verses 6 and 7, first of all, it talks about adversities, the loss of your security. It says, and you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. And see that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. So God warns us in the last days, adversity is going to come and you're going to feel less secure. I know one thing, I feel less secure today than I did when I was a kid. It's taken our security away. Number B, scarcities, loss of a necessity. And there shall be famines and folks, and scarcities, uh, not necessarily because there's no rain, just, just, just let uh, COVID come along and the shelves go bare. We've seen that. We've seen that. We've seen what uh, necessities, loss of our necessities, those scarcities of things that we can't find. You can't hardly find a new car. Why? Because they're scarce. You can't find them. You can't get the parts for them. Scarcities. Then maladies in verse 7c, and pestilences, the loss of the, of the healthy. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. This thing of COVID is serious. This thing of COVID is serious. It's taking people out of here, not by the ones and the twos, by the twenties and the thirties and the hundreds. We're in the last days. Folks, I, I love you, and I don't mean to scare you, but COVID's not the first, and it's not going to be the last. I'm telling you. Then calamities, loss suddenly in verse 7d and earthquakes and divers places of various places and all these things are the beginning it's just the start of the sorrows that are going to come when the tribulation period takes place if the trumpet sounds a tribulate today the tribulation starts tomorrow it starts tomorrow folks these are the, the last days now let me share with you the third thought delivered in verses 9 through 11. Jesus is saying here in this passage of Scripture, it's going to be a time of hatred and dissension, bickering, backstabbing, and infighting like the world's never known. All i got to do is point to Washington, D.C. and prove that's true. Look at our nation, our country, in wars and fightings, 
not only there, it's in the home, it's in the community, in the church, and it's all over the world. It's here. And today, we're scared to breathe a word to anyone in fear we might be sued. That's the truth. You're scared to say anything to anybody because they might sue you for it. Parents will not discipline their children as Smokey sang about in Sunday school, the Bible and the belt. Parents are afraid to discipline their children because they'll call social services on them and have them locked up. No discipline in the home. And you can't trust anybody anymore. You can't trust people. You can't trust people in your church. You can't even trust your own family anymore. It's the world and days we live in. It's a shame, but it's, it's the culmination of the deception, the adversities, the scarcities, the maladies, and the calamities around us has brought us to this point. The Bible says we can be delivered. Look at Matthew 24, 9a. Then shall they deliver us up to be what? Afflicted. Afflicted. We need to be delivered from affliction today. People will do anything to intimidate you and sur into surrendering to their way of thinking. Now, you're here this morning. I'm preaching you the Word of God, and I hope you'll accept the Word of God as it is, as the Word of God, and you'll follow the Word of God. I'm not here to intimidate you. But out in the world, if you don't do things their way, they'll, they'll, they'll curse you down. They'll chase you down. They'll even beat you down this day and time. Why? Because they want to intimidate you into doing what they want you to do. They'll fight you physically. They'll take you to court. They'll use whatever means necessary to get their way. I want to tell you, that's a shame in the world we live in today. Why? Because it shouldn't be that way. You see... It's not going to be long if it's going to be a law against the law to do what I'm doing here today. It's going to be against the law to preach the Bible. If you preach the Bible, they're going to put you in jail because you're intimidating people. No, it's not us intimidating people. It's the world intimidating us, trying to stop us. It's the devil trying to stop the church from standing tall and telling the most glorious story that's ever been told. Smokey just sang that song, I Love You More. What greater story can be told? But they want to silence us from telling that great story. They want to stop us from telling what can help them. Why? Because they want their sin rather than a Savior. They don't want the Savior. They want their sin. Intimidating tactics are the devil's way of afflicting God's people in the last days. B, killed. It says, and shall kill you. I told you just a few days ago in, in Kabul, Afghanistan, church was meeting just like we're meeting right here, singing praises to God. The Taliban came in and mowed them down, made no difference what their age or, or who their gender was. They killed them all. Did you hear that on the news? Mm -mm. They don't want you to know that because they wouldn't mind if that would happen in America, some people. They wouldn't mind if every one of us Christians were just wiped off the face of the earth tomorrow. Why? Because they, they don't want the truth known. They don't, listen, if you knew some of the truth about these uh, people in Afghanistan, this Taliban, they, they are no righteous people. Don't, don't be fooled by that junk. They are no righteous people. They are some of the wickedest people that have ever lived on the face of God's green earth. I'll not get into detail all of the things that they do over there, but it's wicked beyond compare. They call America the, the, the wicked nation. No, it's some of these... Uh, it, it, people of Islam who are radical Islamists, they're the ones who are wicked, who will drag a lady out of her house and murder her in her front yard. That's wicked. That's ungodly. That's, that's just the tip of the iceberg. They'll try to kill you not only physically, but they'll try to kill you spiritually. And here's where we are today. And I love you folks this morning. I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to hurt you. But I want to tell you something. The devil's number one goal is to wipe every one of you off the map spiritually. He doesn't want you to love God. He doesn't want you to pray. He doesn't want you to have faith. He doesn't want you to serve. He doesn't want you to be faithful. And he will do whatever is necessary to kill you spiritually. I see it every day. I see Christians who every day they're going backward instead of going forward. Instead of coming closer to God, they're getting further away from God. COVID has spiritually killed millions of Christians. Christians that used to be on fire for God, 
never miss the house of God for nothing, you don't even see them anymore. Amen or oh man? Why? Because the devil's accomplished what he's after. All he wants you to do is back up spiritually. Just back up. Just back up. Just, just slow down. Just go backwards. Don't go forward. Christians are killed every day in this world physically. They're killed every day spiritually. And we have got to be aware that you are on the devil's list to destroy spiritually. You are on that list. I'm on that list. Why? Because we're hated. Look at 9C. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. It's not just Europe that hates Christians anymore. It's the whole world. If you love the Lord Jesus Christ, the world despises you. And they declare you a religious bigot who's trying to rob them of their rights. I'm not trying to rob anybody of their rights. I'm just trying to give somebody some light where they can see their rights are wicked and want to send them to hell without a Savior. That's all I'm trying to do. Listen, if somebody wants to live a wicked lifestyle, that's their business. They can have at it, but it's my right to try to help them get out of it. I'm not trying to hurt them. I'm not trying to kill them. I'm not trying to rob them of their rights. I'm just trying to introduce them to the greatest person I know in my life, the one who changed my heart and soul and gave me a new start and a new beginning. But they hate us for that. Why? You look at the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the world out there today, the LGBTQ world. If you don't agree with them, you're a bigot. Well, I'm here to tell you, I don't agree with them, and I'm not a bigot. I am not a bigot. I believe in the Bible, and the Bible says from the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation, that lifestyle and that way of thinking is wicked in the eyes of God. It's an abomination to the Lord. But I want to tell you something, folks. The world wants to twist everybody's thinking their way to rob us from the spiritual thinking that God's given us. You see... I don't hate sinners. I don't hate people. But I sure do hate sin. I hate it when young ladies are talked into aborting an unborn baby. You see, it's not the right to choose abortion. The right to choose is in the bedroom. That's when you make the choice. Not after the baby's born. You see, it's, this, it's thinking. It's critical thinking. You see, it's just easier to be selfish and do away with an unborn baby than to control yourself and discipline yourself to do what's right in the eyes of God. Now say amen or oh me. That's what's wrong with this world today. I love the sinner. I want to see them saved and delivered from the power of sin. Sinners hate Christians because they love their selfish sin. Here's their problem. They have no understanding of the truth. The battle of of Genesis to Revelation to this very day we live in is the question, what is truth? What is truth? And folks, if you leave truth up to your mind, you're going to say wickedness is truth. But if you leave what is truth as to what is found within the pages of this blessed old book that God sent to us through his prophets and his men of God of old, if we believe this is true, then we understand there's light in this world. There's a way out of the darkness. There's a way of escape from hell. People don't want you to preach on hell anymore because hell's a consequence. And the world doesn't want you to think there's any consequences for sin. Just do what you want to and live the way you want to, and there are no consequences. My mama taught me there was consequences. Hey, she showed me in the Bible, and then she gave me the belt. Hey, she tried to help teach me the right way and the easy way. Take it from here and here. But if it didn't go from here to here, it went there to there. And you know, it's amazing how you can change somebody's mind from the rear end. Oh, I can tell this ain't popular. I can't help it. It's the truth this morning. Hey, we're afflicted. We're killed. We're hated. But there are a lot of people de-offended. You think it's been tough so far. It's going to get rough now. Got your northern tissue back there? Because here it comes. And then shall many be what? This just ain't in the world. <laughs> this is in the church. This is just not on the lost. This is the saved. This is the day of offense. 
Everybody gets offended about everything. Saved and unsaved alike. You say something they don't like. <laughs> they get bullfrog religion. And they blow up. I'm offended. Listen to me. Matthew chapter 11 verse 6. And blessed is he who shall not be what is that word? Offended in me. You see, when I'm preaching up here, I'm giving you scripture. I'm not giving you, thus saith Walter Yancey. I'm giving you the word of God. And Jesus said, those who listen to his word and are not offended by his word, they'll be blessed. So don't be offended by the word of God this morning. Accept it as truth. Realize your need of light, your need of help, your need of redemption, your need of forgiveness, your need of salvation. Realize that this morning and come to Christ before it's eternally too late. Amen? Amen. You see, I have been taught and have now learned. And you better listen to your preacher. A moment on the lips is a lifetime on the hips. I'm just telling you. You sin today, you pay tomorrow. And I want to tell you something. Pay you do. And pay is hard. But I'm here to tell you, you can live your whole life in pleasure and live in sin and enjoy your sin. But there's a payday at the end of the road. There's a payday at the end of the road. And you will pay if Jesus doesn't. Now, Jesus told me he'd been paid my sin debt on the cross. And he forgave me. And I let him pay my sin debt. Because he can pay it in one prayer. Whereas I'll have to go to hell for all eternity to pay for it myself. I can't think of a sin on God's green earth that is worth me going to hell forever over. Anybody with any common sense would understand that. There's no unrighteous act that you can enjoy every day of your life till you die that's worth after you take your last breath that you go not only to hell where there's fire and falling and the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched but the devil's there, the demons are there, the wicked that have lived throughout the ages are there. There's no sin that I can think of in my life that I want to go to hell for. But every day this world, when you preach against their sin, they're offended. The devil wants them to be offended so they won't listen anymore. They won't learn of a Savior. They won't learn of light. They won't see that there's a light at the end of the tunnel through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't want to understand that. They would rather be offended. They'd rather be offended. Have you ever noticed about somebody who's offended, the first thing they do, they blow up and then they run away. Have you ever stopped to think why they blow up and then they run away? Because they refuse to listen to another word you have to say. That is rebellion. You say, preacher, now how do you know that? Because I've been sitting in this very building and I've preached this very book and I've watched people sit in that seat and the smoke starts rolling and they ain't smoking no cigarette either. <laughs> and it don't take long before they start shaking a little bit. And then they, they blow and they get up and they run out the building because the truth burned them. Not because the truth was wrong, but because they didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to hear it. The truth will set you free, but a lie will send your soul to hell for all of eternity. The offended are in such a mode that they blow up and run away so they don't have to listen to you anymore. And then they just live their life offended the rest of their days. I'm, tell, I'm here to tell you, you could ignore God every day of your life. You could deny God every day of your life. But there's a payday at the end of the road. And you may never go to church and you may never see him. You may never hear from him. You may never talk to him. You may never go near God all the days of your life and say, there is no God. I don't want anything to do with your God and he's not real. But I'm telling you, when you take your last breath and you die, you will meet him face to face and you won't go and run off. You won't blow up that day. And you won't run away that day. You won't stick your
your fingers in your ears that day, you will listen. You will learn. But one day, too late. Why? Psalms 119, 165. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Afflicted, killed, hated, offended, e betrayed. And they shall betray one another and shall hate one another. I've never seen a day in my life, and you haven't either, when people hate each other the way they do today. I'm not trying to be political. I'm just trying to make a point, and my point is valid. I am 57 years old, and I've never seen politicians act like children like I do today just because they can't have their way. When Nancy Pelosi sat up in the House of Representatives and ripped that speech, I don't care if it had been Clinton, Bush, Obama, or Trump. When you do something that disrespectful, you're showing how childish you really are. Amen. That you're going to act out. You know, I know some Baptists that act out. <laughs> I've seen them act out. I have. They just act ugly. Why? Because they can't. What's that guy in that movie says? You can't handle the truth. But boy, he didn't know how right he was. America and the world can't handle the truth. And when they don't want to accept the truth the way it is, they'll just hate you for it and walk away. But I'm here to tell you, you can spend your life hating people if you want to. But I find that's a whole lot better to love each other. A whole lot more fun to care about each other. A whole lot better to enjoy each other's company as Christians and fellowship together than it is to blow up over something and hate each other and despise each other. The Bible says uh, man will betray you, but God never will. Look at Psalms 119 verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord to put confidence in man. It's better to trust in the Lord to put confidence in princes. All nations can pass me about but in the name of the Lord will I what? I'll destroy them. You see, they can betray you and turn their back on you, but they're still going to face God one day. You cannot change the fact that one in one will die. And after this becometh the judgment. Yeah, I'm trying to say, Christians, we're going through a whole lot today. We're, we're being afflicted, killed, hated, offended by, betrayed. But that's okay. When we come to the end of the road, we will have lived a lot shorter life, afflicted, betrayed, killed, hated, and offended than we will in the life to come. In the life to come, we're going to know peace, joy, happiness for all of eternity. Say amen. For all eternity. Finally, yeah, here's the one you're looking for. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. I love y'all. And I know y'all think I'm mean and I'm hard, but I'm not. I'm honest. You better be careful who you're listening to when it comes to the Word of God. Because I'm telling you, there's a movement in the Christian world today to destroy Christians. They're standing up in their little million-dollar suits, and I don't pay a million dollars for my suit. This is a fat man special. <laughs> what do you mean fat man special? What's that place called when the casual mail? For big and tall. I go to in the Greenville, South Carolina, and I ease in that little place, and I pick these little babies up for a little or nothing. I go to Omar the Maker. I don't spend a million dollars on my suits. I don't try to impress you. My hairdresser's been sick. Are you well? I need to see you bad. <laughs> They're going to start calling me Phyllis Della if we don't do something real quick. And, and that woman was ugly, so we got to do something about my hair. Say amen. I'm not here to impress you with my hair and my looks, but I'm here to impress you with the truth. I don't want to deceive you. That's why I give you scripture for what I preach. 
But you see, there's a movement in the world today, not only to deceive the world, but to deceive the church. And to get us to believe, if he can just get us off track this much, in the long haul, it becomes this much. That's all it takes. False prophet is the high, is a high class description <laughs> for an out and out liar. Amen. The spiritual world is full of them. The heathen world is full of them. These people will believe, followed, and empowered if you trust them as they lie to you. But you know what helps you know what the truth is? This book right here. Lawrence Lloyd. You remember Lynn Lloyd? Oh, yeah. His brother Lawrence was in my first church. I loved old Lawrence Lloyd. Because Lawrence was a man of courage. He was a real short fellow. Him and Lynn were real short dudes. Old Lawrence would come up in church and I'd preach, Amen, Brother Walt. Amen. Amen. He'd, he'd shout the house down. To learn from Brother Lloyd. Amen, Brother Walter. Preach it. But one Sunday he won't shout. He will pout. He is sitting right over there where Vicky Reed sat. And he was looking at me, and I could tell he was not a happy camper. So I had, when church was over, everybody went out the door. Lawrence Lloyd, he used to say, Preacher, I love you. You're doing a good job. He didn't say that that morning. Need to see you in your office as soon as you're done. Right outside my door was my little office. It won't be as this little area up here, and it was right on the side. So I said, Lawrence, go and have a seat. I'll be with you in just a minute. Everybody went out, and I went, well, Lawrence, what's up? He says, you lied this morning. I lied. Lawrence, what did I lie about? He said, you misquoted the Bible. Well, tell me, how, how did I misquote the Bible? He said, you said that the angels in heaven shouted at the redemption of one sinner in heaven. I said, yes, sir, that's what I said. You're not right. And he took his King James Bible. He didn't use no NIV. He didn't use no ESV. He used the KJV. And he opened that Bible and he says, read that preacher. And he says, there's rejoicing in the presence of angels when one sinner repents. He said, them angels don't understand being saved. But all them people who've died and gone to heaven, they understand it. I said, Lawrence, you're exactly right. You be back tonight at 6 o'clock, and I'll correct the whole thing. I did. I got in the pulpit. I corrected. And you know what Lawrence said? Hey, Amen, preacher. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. He's back to He's back to shouting glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. I'm not here to lie to you. I'm here to give you the truth. I'm not here to offend you. I'm here to help you. I'm not here to rob you. I'm here to help you find the joy of the Lord. And you in the absence of the word of God. Every head's bowed. I'm going to do something different. You sisters just stay where you're at. Brother Smokey, I want you to come back. I want you to sing that song you sang, I Love You More, as an invitation to this morning. This morning, God loves you more. How many here as a Christian can say, Pastor, I've kind of let the devil mess with me a little bit. I've been offended. I may have hated a time or two. Or maybe this morning you're afflicting. Somebody is persecuting you for being a Christian. You say, but preacher, I got need this morning of God's hand in my life. I need that joy. I need to know he loves me more. And I need to trust in that love. I'm a Christian. I know I'm saved, but I'm having a hard time, preacher. Please remember me when you pray. Shut your head up and tell God you heard him this morning. Come on, all over the room. God bless you. How many here this morning say, Pastor, I've got some friends and loved ones who are on that list of afflictors, killers, haters, offenders, betrayers, and deceivers. And they're treating me badly, but I need to stand my ground and continue to s spread the light of the gospel, reflect the light of the gospel everywhere I go. Pastor, pray for my friend, my family, my neighbor. I want to see him get saved. I want to see him get right with God. My heart's burdened for a loved one today. Come on, slip your hand up. God knows who it is. God bless you. All over the room. Please come pray for them this morning. Come pray for yourself. Let me ask one more question. Is there one person here this morning say, Pastor, 
I don't know if I died right now I'd even go to heaven. I'm not sure I'm saved, Pastor. But I don't want to die and go to hell. I don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to waste this life and, and lose my eternity. I want to invest this life and gain my eternity. I will not come to you. I will not embarrass you. I will not call you by name. I pray for you in general. Is there one, a lady, a gentleman, a young person, senior adult, adult, say, Pastor, remember me when you pray. I'm concerned about my soul. Would you slip your head up so I can pray for you? Preacher, pray for me. Yes, I see that hand. Is there another one? I'm concerned about my soul. Preacher, pray for me. Let's stand to our feet. Father, I pray first of all for this one that's concerned about their soul. May they come to the altar and take Brother Eston by the hand. May they take the word of God, Lord, and show them how to be saved this morning. If they didn't raise their hand, help them come. Give them the courage to come, be saved today, and not uh, waste their life and lose their eternity, but invest their life and gain their eternity. For Christians, whether for themselves or their lost loved ones or their Christian brothers who are backslidden, God, fill these altars with people praying for each other this morning. Lord, bless this invitation now. Speak to every heart in Jesus' name. As Brother Smokey begins to sing this verse of invitation, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Come on, tell God you love him. Tell God you love him. That's right. Come on. Let's fill these altars and pray. It all begins with prayer. Prayer today is an answer to my So you're running out of prayers to pray. You think nobody cares anyway. You're thinking all your sins go unforgiven. Broken heart and broken tree. Sometimes you can't feel anything. You wonder how.
your hand. I appreciate you being here today. I guess you come to a very close of service. A couple things I want to say to you. First of all, he's got a brand new CD. What's the title of that CD? Serving Him. Serving Him. Go on back there. Yeah, it's going back there. That's right. Uh, I want to tell you something. The price of that CD is worth that one song. Just to listen to that one song over and over and over again. But let me encourage you. It's a whole lot easier to buy that CD and carry it home with you than it is to carry Smokey home with you and try to feed him. <laughs> I take him out to eat every time, and he's an expensive feed. <laughs> Amen. Right, Brenda? Oh, come on, Brenda. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I forgot. It's Brenda. That's the expensive feed. All right. There we go. You open your mouth on me again, big girl. I don't know you. But anyway, stop by and pick up the CD on your way out. Let him know how much you appreciate being with us. He comes every second week in September. You think I ought to come back next year? Yeah. I do too. All right, Essence is going to tell you about tonight. Be faithful. Be back tonight. I thank you for being here. And I'm here to tell you, he loves you more than you'll ever know. All right, tonight's, uh, well, first of all, you know, the Lord calls us to do th two things as Christians. Win the lost and encourage the brethren. Amen? Amen. Tonight, that is the, the goal, to win the lost. But we need some encouragement from you guys. Uh, we need you guys to please uh, pray for us. Please be back tonight in support of us. And there are still a bunch of flyers back there. And I know it will be very encouragement to me and every member of Hands of Glory. They were all gone before we left tonight, this morning. And uh, please be back tonight. And if you've seen any of the performances before, this one is not like any that you've ever seen. And I promise you that. And it will be a blessing to you. And with that, I'm going to have Brother Sean Patterson lift his voice up and close us in prayer.